Hello friends. Hello friends. Bear with me just a minute here. <laughs> getting there, getting there. Okay, I have indication that I have sound, but I do not have any in my ear, which worries me, but I'll try to get by without it for a little while. If somebody's watching, if one of my regulars is watching, let me know if you hear me all right. Hello, friends. My name is Dan. I am hovering here. I, no, I, hear, I hear now that I've got sound, but 15-second delay sound. That's right. My name is Dan. I am in historic downtown Charleston, South Carolina. Hello, Karen. Good to have you here. And this is Daily Art Adventure number 747. Read it and weep. <laughs> I don't know why you would do that, but you know, it's a famous line from somewhere. Um, started this painting yesterday. I'm quite happy with it. I actually noodled around with it, <laughs> if I can use that term. Uh, this afternoon, or this morning, I mean, back at the house where we're staying. We are actually staying with my wife's brother and his family. Wife, my wife Nancy, her brother Jeff, his wife Donna, having a great time. So here I am, I'm about to do oil glaze which means it's time to do some oil mess. I mean, some, some abstract mess, what I mean to say, with oil sticks. <laughs> Whew, I hope I get better at this in the future. You may wonder if doing this kind of stuff on my painting ever freaks me out. <laughs> the answer is, heck yes! <laughs> Are you kidding? This is crazy. I, I only do it because over and over again I see that it, it works out well. <laughs> uh, but it's still crazy. All right, that might be enough. Uh, maybe a little bit of red. Red, red. Is somebody asking about the pencils, Karen? Thank you for answering them. Thank you, that's right. Marae de Morade, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Good to have you on board. Thank you, Karen, for answering that question for me, for us. I actually posted an image of this painting in, in a YouTube community, on the community page. Those of you who receive notifications from me, then you would have received a, a notification. And uh, I just put a picture up of this painting when it was almost, I worked on it a little bit after that, but when it was almost at this point, and I mentioned that I really like this painting well enough as it is, which means <laughs> there's a real danger that I could ruin it here. I don't mean right here, but there's a real danger that I could ruin it in the next couple of hours. Whoops. <laughs> I could barely reach. Evidently, I loosened that, the top of that for some reason. So I really hope that I don't ruin this beautiful painting in the next couple of hours. Just a second here and I'll, I'll pick up the camera and uh, show you guys what it is that I'm painting. If any of you were with me last night, then you know I was here. Well, I think I started painting at 5.30 local time and quit at 8.30. So I, I didn't go that long, not as long as I had expected. Now, those of you, especially if you're new here, 
and if you were wondering, if you were greatly alarmed by the oil pastel abstract craziness that I put down just a few minutes ago, um, then let me point out already. Hello, I can't, I don't know how to read that name. C N D S N Z. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it, but glad you started watching last night. Is that what you said? Again, watch. Oh, this morning. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. So when I, I put those oil. That is very strange. And forgive me, I have some technical issues going on. Um, I normally have an in-ear monitor, which helps me a great deal to know but that 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 monitor was not working. So let me see if this one does. Testing one, two, three. Nope, which means I have a more. Forgive me, those of you who are new, I know I commit all kinds of technical snafus. That's because I'm a lone lone operator trying to <laughs> be my own producer and my own painter at the same time. I've mentioned before, when I'm out here painting, I have approximately eight separate and distinct electronic devices functioning at the same time. And as you can imagine, even though, yes, I am careful, yes, I do know about bleed over. Um, in spite of that, very strange ghost-like things happen uh, to my broadcast, to my technology and they, they cancel each other out and so on and so forth. So that's what I'm experiencing right now. So forgive me, I do not have an in-ear monitor. Time for me, me to move my easel already. Because I have sun coming through onto the back of my canvas. You can't paint with sun on the front of your canvas and you can't paint with sun on the back of your canvas. And you can't paint with sun on yourself. So there you go. I have an umbrella, as you can see, off to the side. Well, this is a good, that's off the side of my easel. This is a good time for me to turn you around and show you what I'm painting. Forgive me, just forgive all the shaking here for a minute. Let me get you steady, there we go. I'm doing a vertical view so you know crop this in something like that and you get the image um, the focal point of course is this beautiful steeples st michael's church i believe is the name of that and over here is the post office and this right here is a classic for those of you who don't know charleston south those of you who do know charleston you say yep that's it that is the classic charleston Charlestonian architecture is that porch. So I like this view because it's a pretty good uh, representation of all things Charlestonian. Beautiful church steeples uh, and so forth. All right, now that, that glaze that I just did is, is so dark, it's almost in danger of not being a glaze. <laughs> No problem. I wipe off as much as I want, where I want. And I'm going to come back in just a few minutes and I'm going to do some more glazing here. And I always, in the back of my mind, I always have a, forgive me, but a rather squeaky little voice. <laughs> and not, not any of you, of course. Some other people who I've encountered over the years who, who would say, well, if you're going to wipe it all off, why'd you put it on in the first place? <laughs> right. Well, obviously, whoever says that has never finished furniture, or at least good furniture. You don't, you, 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 you put it on and then you wipe it off 
you know, to the right to the right degree, to the right amount. I'm not wiping it all off. I'm just wiping off what I want. The harder I rub, the longer I rub in any one spot, and the more off it comes. So it's like a very, very fine control. It's like it's like the luxury of exercising hyper control without the the downsides that normally come with painting in a hyper controlled manner. Does that make sense? So I get to be a control freak without looking like it. That's tongue in cheek, but close enough, you know what I mean. All right, I'm gonna pick up a couple smaller brushes this time and do some more glaze. This time some blue. So every time, all the glaze I did a few minutes ago was all warm. It was Indian yellow and oxide red, I believe. And now I have some phthalo blue on my brushes. I say this often, but I'll mention it again. One of the most fun things that you can do when you're glazing. So if you're an oil painter, Glazing should be a, and in my opinion, should be a major element in your painting strategy. Okay? Now, I'll exaggerate a bit. I'll, I'll say tragically, um, in the 20th century, for very specific historical reasons, which I will not get into right now, but in the 20th century, the magic of glazing, the magic of painting with transparent colors was largely lost. None of my painting professors in college that I can remember ever mentioned, advocated, or demonstrated painting uh, in, in transparent layers. None. I might have missed it. It's very possible. But I don't remember it ever happening. Anyway, so glazing should be a major strategy, tool in your tool bag. There, that's a good way to put it. Um, let me do a little bit more. And I was going to say, besides that, um, glazing across the temperature equator. <laughs> For some reason, I just like putting it that way. Crossing the warm, cool equator in a glaze is particularly fun. In other words, if you have a cool, if your painting is essentially cool, yes, it, this is oil glaze. Thanks, Uncle. If, you're, if your painting is, or some part of your canvas, if some part of your canvas is bluish and cool, then putting a warm glaze on top of that is particularly effective, fun, <laughs> you, may, you, may, you just use the plain old fun word, fun, it's fun to put warm glazes on top of cool and vice versa, cool glazes on top of warm. And I'm doing quite a bit of both of that, both of those here. First I did a warm glaze on the cool sky, then, then I did back cool again. Down here, I've got a bunch of warm stuff now, and I'm doing, I'm doing cool blue ultramarine glazes. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Did you just do that? No, I started last night. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I started about did about three hours last night. And, and hope to get ninety-five percent finished tonight. <laughs> I'm going to do some more ultramarine 
most of this glazing, most of it, I do with dirty brushes. That is to say, if I'm after I after I left the the warm brownish glazes, I, well, I put those brushes down. But yeah, between colors, typically, because more often than not, more often than not, this might sound a little ironic, and this is ironic, I guess. More often than not, I don't want a perfectly pure glaze color. Sometimes I do, but as I say, more often than not, I, I want something a little bit, just a little bit dirty, not clean. Push the cool even a little bit more. I'm going to, you guys can't even see what I'm doing up there, can you? I'm sorry. Way up there, I'm just in the sky and up there in the corner. And right now I'm doing purple. Oh, Hello. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you. Are you from inside here? Yeah. 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 Well, thanks for coming out. Did you just go to stay? No, no. I, I oh. was here last night from about 5 until 8. Okay. I painted, yeah. So what do you do, sketches and then... No, quite the contrary. No, the very opposite of that. All the pencil stuff you see here is actually on top. It's late. No sketching. In fact, the very first thing I did, you see these, these wild abstract yeah. marks? The very first thing I do is I put a completely unrelated abstract painting on the canvas. Yeah. So as yeah. far away from sketching as you could possibly get. And, the, and then little by little by little, the image emerges uh -huh. and, the, and the pencil, as I said, comes late in the process. So it's, it's there a little bit for drawing, but it's there mostly because I just like the, the texture that the pencil adds to it. Yep. Yes, I did. And yesterday was even hotter. Oh, yeah. I know. Welcome so to Charleston, eh? Yeah. <laughs> you have water? I do. Oh, thank you. You're sweet. I appreciate that. <laughs> that lady works in the attorney's office. I'm standing right outside. Hello. Thank you. All right, now I'm going to switch back to warm again. I'm not quite done with the glazing. I thought maybe I was, but nope, I'm not. Whew! It's going to get cool after a while, right? <laughs> Thank you. All right, those brushes are clean enough, I think. Dan Nelson, here, I'll give you a card. <laughs> so you can remember, who was that masked man? <laughs> Thank you. Whew, <laughs> it's hot out here, gang. Sweat is kind of dripping off my face. Back to warm glaze again. So some Indian yellow, a little bit of orange, I don't know what kind of orange. 
Well, that's too orange though, so. <laughs> that's a, whoops, wrong color. You may notice that uh, I am not very careful to stay in the lines. I am, in other words, I color outside the lines quite a bit. And yes, you should do the same. <laughs> getting quite the color I want here. I'll keep working on it till I till I like it. Alright, that's that's pretty close. All this warm light down here is a uh, secondary glow bouncing off other stuff. There's, it's no direct sun. Direct sun is up here. Uh, this is secondary glow bouncing off buildings and bouncing off sky and so forth. But very definitely warm. Warm light, not cool. Even though it's in the shade, which would dictate cool, right? Cool color. Even though it's in the shade, it's receiving a lot of, sec of bounced light. So warm. Maybe a little bit of wiping off. All right, I am done with the glazing. Next is some fuzz. The fuzz layer, the famous. <laughs> famous in my own mind, the famous fuzz layer. Or the infamous fuzz layer, maybe. It's quite counterintuitive. All right, the fuzz layer for you, any newcomers is translucent. Everybody knows these words. You just get them mixed up when you're in a hurry. Transparent, clear like glass. Translucent, fuzzy like a frosted light bulb. And opaque like a wall. Okay, so translucent. You can see through it, but it's fo foggy or fuzzy. So the tr fuzz layer is translucent very soft edges and local color sorry I started I started painting again started thinking with my eyes before I was finished with that sentence uh, 
I looked up at the sky and said, you yeah, know, I like it, but I, no, I want it a little lighter than that. Yeah, there we go. It's so nice to be able to have that, that kind of control, super control. All right, so another way to think about the fuzz layer is anything that I want to appear that it is glowing. So that's always the sky, always the sun, always the sky. But it's also anything the sun is hitting, striking, which is certainly this great big white steeple here. For you newcomers, let me turn you around really quickly and show you the view. Isn't that beautiful? Charleston is... <laughs> <laughs> an absolute orgy of beautiful old <laughs> there's a word picture for you beautiful old architecture it's just it is it is just amazing um, so things that are glowing which is things the sun is hitting lights so I have one gas light here and a couple down here other street lights there traffic lights tail lights and a, a porch light right here. So all those things are good candidates for the glow. I'm trying to decide now whether to start with, no, not tail lights. Um, I think I'm gonna start with the, the warm glow down here at street level, which I mentioned earlier, even though it's not being hit directly by the sun, um, it's it's a warm glow because of secondary light. It's a bounced light. I'm mixing up. It doesn't matter. Please do not take notes on this part. I'm mixing up titanium white and and uh, yellow ochre. Same color, for, nope, a little bit lighter. Go up here in the sky. Very soft edges, very, very, like no edges. <laughs> I have light going, you know, a good three inches, three or four inches beyond its proper boundary when I do the fuzz layer. The fuzz layer is very closely related to um, atmospheric perspective. You could say it's a, a, a subset of atmospheric perspective. That would be an appropriate mind, mindset. For me, the fuzz layer serves an additional distinct purpose and service. It is a very intentional uh, exaggeration of soft edges. Especially for, for me, myself, I tend to go, and left to my own devices, I do too many hard edges, left to my own devices, left to my own pleasure and inclination. Even though my head knows better, I go, nah, I shouldn't do all these hard edges. But if I stop thinking, I accidentally, I find myself accidentally doing them. And we all have weaknesses like that, actually. And it's good to be aware of them. I can imagine somebody saying, well, no, I think if if that's your natural voice, you should just do it. You should do those hard edges. And I go, no, uh-uh, that's not true. I think it's my natural 
bad voice, if you will. It's not my natural good. I have natural good inclinations as well, but this is not one of them. All right, I think I'm going to stop there, at least for the moment. I'm going to switch to some warm white. Uh, oh, can you hear that steeple? Let's get here. Oh, it just rang once. Well, that's funny. <laughs> it's five o'clock. Should be ringing. We should get a whole carillon full of tunes behind us here in a minute. Okay, once again, a warm white. That's a little bit too white. Let's add some more yellow ochre to that. Yeah, there we go. Let's see this. I, you'll notice my um, steeple is be, it's in shade down here, and that'll be more obvious as I proceed. But even the part that is in sun, the bottom of it is darker sun, warmer and darker, and the higher it goes, the whiter it gets. I'm assuming you understand that that process that, that you, you incorporate that in your in your painting because the, the sunlight that is hitting this bottom part is close to the horizon, therefore it's a warmer sun, whereas the sun that's up here is catching the more full, bright sun, full, brighter sun, so it's a whiter sun. So if you have a tall, tall object in your painting like this, and it's an evening painting, then you would, you would follow the same practice. Clouds, for instance, are whiter at the top and warmer as they get down toward the horizon. All right, that's enough of that, I think. Enough of that on the steeple. Now, I'm going to start doing some um, neither fuzz nor, neither, neither fuzz layer nor glaze, but something sort of in between. This is not something I normally do. I've done it a few times. I don't know if it's a growing trend, I don't know if it's a part of my evolution, or if it's just a passing fancy. But I'm going to apply, and I'll get this. this if you regulars, you'll recognize, like, wow, you don't normally do that. Here it is. A um, translucent wet paint. You could, you could almost call it a translucent glaze. A glaze that has some white in it, but it's not, I'm not going to stumble. This is a, that's too dark. This is a wet paint. It's got a lot of liquid in it. And it's a purple, purple, um, purple blue that I'm putting on here right at the moment. I, you, I say often, if you watch me, that scumbling is a, is a great tool. Scumbling is applying opaque paint very thinly, sort of a dry brush effect, you could call it dry brush. Um, and it's a very, very handy tool, um, but it leaves a texture on the painting that I believe the viewer finds unappealing. So it's not a good idea to finish with a scumble. After scumbling, you have to come back and cover up some of the scumbling with some real painting. What, what, what I mean by that is enough paint on the brush so that you can put a mark down and leave it, and people can identify it as a brush stroke. Does that make sense? Okay, but this is not that. This is not scumbling because my brushes have, are wet. They have a lot of medium on them. This is a kind of a new trick. I use, it, I don't know, it just dawned on me a couple weeks ago. It's like, oh, you know what? I don't do that very often. That would give me a an additional voice, an additional tool in my toolbox. I'm not sure what to call it. Wet stumbling. <laughs> I'm not sure that what to call it. I'm open to suggestions. Nominations are now open for it. It's a slurry is a good word for it. It's a wet. It's wet because of the liquid, right? High, high amount of liquid in the, in the paint. So it's not, it's not dry, not a dry brush at all. 
And yes, you can leave uh, this, this texture generally, I think, is perfectly fine to leave uh, on the canvas un, uncorrected, if you will, unlike scumbling that needs to be fixed, needs to be gone over. Use my head and I'm completely in your way. Can't be helped sometimes. I still have a a dark um, purple blue, bluish purple on my brushes. But it also has a tiny bit of white in it. So that, that's what's different from what I thank you what I normally do at this stage. Well, I'm having fun with this, so I'm going to just continue. <laughs> I, I dirtied up the color a little bit. A little bit of brown, a little bit of purple. Hey, I was talking, I don't, you don't have to go back and listen to yesterday, of course, but I was talking quite a bit yesterday about this new uh, ambition of mine to not use the term loose painting. And I spent quite a bit of time trying to dis explain why I now think that I've just discovered this in the last... Uh, in the last couple of weeks and I'm going to excise the term loose painting. I'm going to try not to use that, that wordage anymore because I discovered, much to my surprise and dismay, but I'm always glad to discover things, I discovered that when an early journey, that's what I call a, you know, a beginner painter, a wannabe, a student, an uh, intermediate painter, that's what I just I call it an early journey painter, when an early journey painter hears the term loose painting, I believe, I believe that they cannot help. Lovely. Good, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I you guys even got in there. You even got <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it'll be legible or not. For a price I'll I'll, 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 I'll put I'll make it legible. Thank you. I assume you've been doing this forever. Yes, that is correct. I'm, this is my job. Yes, and you're this right. Is your job. You're correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it was always a pipe dream of mine. To oh, was it learn, really? Learn to do something creative like that. <laughs> okay, well, as soon as you retire. Yeah, there you that's go. It. <laughs> that's who most of my students are. So Pe people who've well. retired. Oh, yeah people who've retired and they can finally do what they want to do, something for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> and one of your cards is down here. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Please. Perfect. Thank you so much. Good. Cool. Thank you, Janet. Get back yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, oh, sweet. There's the lady from inside the attorney's office here. Okay, so yesterday I was talking quite a bit about this, my new revelation. Do not call it loose because when an early journey painter hears the term loose, I promise you what they hear, what, if that's you, what you hear is don't draw things accurately. Instead, draw them loosely. I, mean, I don't know how you could help but hear it uh, in that manner. I don't know how you could come to any other conclusion. It's like, oh, I see. Don't don't draw it too carefully. Draw it kind of messy, right? If, if that's you, feel free to nod. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you for that nod. Um, and uh, 
I have discovered late in life that that is a terrible description of good painting. And even as I was driving down here this afternoon to start my second day on this painting, um, as, I, as I looked at the painting, um, I had, uh, oh, there's a mistake. Well, let's fix that. I had a high degree of satisfaction because, in case you ever wondered, do artists feel satisfied about their work? The answer is, heck yes. Good ones do. And the ones that are going to become good do too. There you go. Did you, hear, did you catch that? So stop bad mouth. Stop that self-flagellation. Speak good things over yourself in your painting. All right. Um, as I was coming downtown, I looked with satisfaction <laughs> on my painting because the drawing, by that I mean the lines, where things are, the shapes, the, the cars are good cars, good lamp, good porch, good steeple, good building, good all details, good flag, good, you know what I mean? The drawing is good. And that means, in a sense, that when I come down and paint today, in a sense, I can relax and have fun and paint well and do all the stuff that really makes a painting a good painting, which is, which is not, and I was talking to my sister-in-law too, just for fun, she was asking, you know, she's not an artist, doesn't really have, like most people, doesn't have exposure, experience to a real artist, quote unquote. So I was trying to describe the art world to her. And, and I said, it's kind of like a football game or some kind of soccer match or something. Whereas, which is, um, you have to have a good drawing. Your drawing has to be correct. So for those of you who are saying, well, what do you mean we can't do loose painting? Then what I'm gonna say is that's correct. You don't, hey gang. Hello. So I'm finally painting. Oh wow, it looks way good, way better. Does it? Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot warmer. It is a lot warmer and fuzzier down here. Yeah. I hope that's a good thing. Oh, are you live streaming? I am. All right. Yeah, so feel free to talk. <laughs> that sounded smart. I didn't mean that. That was sincere. Got 11 <laughs> that would be my nephew, Jay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, 11 viewers. Busting out records here, left and right. <laughs> what is really funny though, so often I have 11 viewers from all around the world. It's really funny. Does the weather happen to like melt your paint or anything like that? No, no, I've never. I've never been anywhere that it was so hot that humid, humidity makes my acrylics dry slowly, but I'm not in acrylics anymore, now I'm in oils. And, um, and I've painted in below freezing weather, but it would have to be way below freezing, I think, for it to impact, um, well, oils. Yeah, so, no, I'm the one that's uncomfortable, but I don't think I don't I think my paints are my paints are not uncomfortable. <laughs> How much more you got left? Um lots. Um sort of like all the details. Now what I, but what I want to be careful is that I don't obliterate too much of the you know what looked good this morning when you saw it in the hallway in the house, you know? It really did look good. And I don't want to like lose what looked good there. I don't know if that makes sense. So I, I'm going to be careful. I hope not to paint too much. That is the biggest danger: is is killing it by overdoing it. Yeah. A few, not many. Uh, the lady, a couple ladies from in here in the attorney's office came up. That was
was nice. All right, I'm gonna change gear. So I've been doing dark details for a while. I'm gonna do some. You read the comments, Eric? I do. Yeah, usually I, I take a break and. What are they saying? Anybody saying anything it's particularly? Funny. The braces and bow tie was funny. <laughs> Why braces and bow tie when the Charleston Fashion Police arrest you? That's right. <laughs> Who said that? Jake? Oh, Jake. Hey, Jake. It must have been a while since you've seen me paint downtown, Jake. I started this about, man, months ago. I started painting. I decided it was my look. I might be wrong, but... Yeah. Whoops, it's too far. Hang on. Yeah, so I just... No, I dress this way at home, too. This is my standard go out and paint plain air. Isn't that crazy? You ever, to, you ever get paint on your shirt? Oh, all the time. Every time. <laughs> yep. Virtually every time. And I can cover up some of it. <laughs> yeah. I can cover up some of it with... Oh, look. Dang. Oh, got Oh, rats. This is a new shirt, too. So I take, I take white out, like from an office supply store, and <laughs> cover up the... <laughs> That's funny plus, plus, I only really have to look back good from the back, right? Exactly. How do I look? Good point. Right. <laughs> very clean. <laughs> yeah, very clean. No paint on your back. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, Jake, referring, going back to Jake's comment about my suspenders and bow tie. Um, when you paint downtown, you often have to park illegally, at least for a few minutes, because you're unloading all your stuff. Yeah. And you know what? If you're dressed like this, the parking police are a little bit nicer to you. <laughs> I mean, that's not the only reason I'm doing it, but it is true. Yeah. If you dress up, people think you're up to some good instead of no good. How many times have you seen it done? That's a good question. I think, well, not counting a couple weddings that I did down here. I think I've been down here to paint. It's either two or three times, but one of those times I, I was here for several days and did a whole bunch of paintings so I would say I probably painted a total of five days in Charleston up till now yeah. over the years but some of those go back quite a quite a long ways you consider yourself working right now? oh yeah look at me sweat <laughs> I mean I'm having fun but if it wasn't my job, I might wait till it cooled down a little more yeah. and not get as much done. Yeah, no, I, I work like a, I work like a worker pretty much all the time, not like a hobbyist. Right. And I will stop sweating here in a while when the sun gets off me and the temperature goes down. So did you find something interesting? You must know all the places. Well, it's constantly changing. Is it really? Trying to keep up with all no, that. it's not. These buildings are 200 years old. <laughs> I'm kidding. You're right, but what's inside them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. So what's your favorite thing? And since you grew up here, in downtown Charleston, that's really hard. That is. Um, okay, some of them doesn't have to be your most. Like, do you have you in your life have you gone to all the museums or? I loved the museums growing up. I'd go to Gibbs with my mom. I was old. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like dollhouses, kind of like? Kind of, kind of, but it was just in a wall. And you'd look through them, and it had real lights. Oh, yeah, and yeah. sound effects for each room. It was so cool. <laughs> that. that would... Um, 
I grew up, well, I lived in downtown um, until I was Really? Eight, really? Eight, wow. Down over by Colonial Lake. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. um, and I liked when it rained because it was flood. It was flood and <laughs> you couldn't go to work or school or anything until you just wear your boots and rain boots and walk around. And then <laughs> people would kayak down the street. Are you serious? Yeah, my dad would wear his waders to walk to work. Um, really? Yeah, so of all these buildings flooded at one time or another? Pretty much, yeah. I was actually yeah. thinking about that when I was driving home last night. It's like, wow. I mean, out of the ocean's right over there. Yes. Yeah, we're <laughs> and there's below not, sea level. It's right not now. like it's our, what? We're below sea level. Are you serious? Yeah. So the city what? Is horrible drainage. Horrible. What? Awful. This girl says we're below sea level right here. That's crazy. <laughs> oh good, here comes my wife and Aunt Donna. Which one is she, left or right? <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. Isn't he amazing? Oh, yeah. Yes, I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'll check again. And that outfit brought you a biscuit. It's a specialty from Charleston. Oh. oh, good. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, good. Thank you. It is hot. They keep threatening that it's going to okay, cool down. Right, wow, that's funny. Um, Last well, night, he had just sat up when somebody comes, they go, Dan Nelson. Yeah. They do them? Yeah. They do them. They follow wow. them on the YouTube. Oh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, but I stuck my head in the uh, attorney's office here when I got here. Good. And talked to the receptionist. And she had, Yes, she had gotten my email. Okay. <laughs> she said, well, I thought about passing it on to, you know, the bosses. And she wisely decided not to, because it's, you know, whatever. So anyway, so she was very friendly, and so I was glad I did that.
So which one's the good artist that you're saying? She's a graphic designer. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah, good. Pencils, that's drawing is the main thing. Yeah, that's the one, so build off that. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and beautiful. Don't hug me, I'm sweaty. Give me a loose hug. There you go. Good to see ya. Yes, I'll see you tonight. Okay, good. Okay, good. Good to meet you. Likewise. Thank you. I can't wait you to see you. Thank you. Take the heat. Yeah, really. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Really good. Great. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Come in the shade, really. Yeah. Woo! It's hot, isn't it? Are you hungry yet? No, I'm not. She got you a delicious biscuit. Oh, fantastic. Good. <laughs> Looking amazing, Dan. Well, thank you. So I hope I don't overdo it. Hold tight to the reins. Be pulling back the whole time like, whoa, 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 whoa. Is that stroke really necessary? I asked myself, was that really necessary? It was. <laughs> I said <say> yes. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Well, <laughs> yeah, I got a great parking place. <sighs> Absolutely. All right, it's cooling down finally. You're still sweaty, but I am still down. sweaty. I'm still <laughs> dripping. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I've got it. I've, I've got it right here. Oh, I know it. Oh, believe me. I've, I mean, watch. I do this. I've done this a dozen times already. Guess how long it lasts? Yeah. That's that's wedding Peter, but my Instagram is uh, Daniel Nelson Art. <laughs> Did you? Oh yeah, yeah. Did you? Was he there? Yeah. Right 
Okay, I might be done with the sky there. Not up there, but down here. I think I'm done with the sky. So that's what I've done in the last several minutes. Turn this up a little bit, make sure I'm actually getting audio. I'm pulling up my reference photo. There we go. No. Are you? Yeah. Oh, I need to upload that onto my phone. Is he in Austria right now? Thank you. Please do. Thank you. <laughs> Are you getting married? <laughs> What's your name? That's I'm Dan Nelson. <laughs> Are you? Well, thank you. Are you Duffy or Young? I'm Duffy is up there. Is he? I think Young already left. <laughs> <laughs> I should talk to take a look. Oh, wow. Thank you. Well, nice to meet hey, you. likewise. Have Thank you. Day. Have a good day. Uh-huh. Did I give her a card? Yeah. Yes. Did I get one of hers? No. Right down there. Mary Martin. Okay. Yeah, Mary Martin. The white building. Oh, well, hey, gang. <laughs> that was a flurry of activity, wasn't it? And I'm ignoring you really well. I'll look back, come back to your chats later. Marlene, thank you for that nice comment. I know I missed a whole bunch of others. I'll go back to that later. I want to pull up and see what colors are on these cars. I'm assuming there's there's some. I'm assuming there is some blue, and there is indeed, especially on the windows, on the windshield, and the hoods. So let me get a little bit of that. Never paint with your fingers. Part of the reason I do paint with my fingers is because I'm careful not to have any cobalts or cadmiums on my, or any other toxic um, pigments that I know of in, in on my so I still don't recommend doing it, but on occasion I do it as you can see. Is that done? No, 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 no. I'll be here till nine or ten o'clock and then I won't At be night? done yet. Yeah tonight. So you can do it in the dark? Oh yeah, I've got well, a, I mean, wonder, I, I a wonderful light. Yep, so yep. Yeah, so I have pictures after the sun goes oh, down. I, I, I go that. by the, these are the cars that were parked here yesterday. I gotcha, okay. <laughs> yep, that's, that's the way it works. Thank you. Okay, so did you, see you tomorrow yeah. afternoon as well? No, I have to go home to Raleigh tomorrow, so I will be gone. 
Did I? Did you get one of my cards? I did. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for your hospitality. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for your hospitality. Sometimes there's just a time to just to paint abstract and just forget what the photograph says. That spot right there was just crying out for some blue. Give us some blue, give us some blue. That's what it was saying to me, so I did. And it looks great. <laughs> Hmm. Trying to decide where to go next. I want to look at the the light on the shady shadow side of this steeple. According to that photograph, it actually has a slight purplish cast, which is what it already has in my painting. I think I want it slightly bluer than what it is right now. So a little, a little ultramarine blue. Let me zoom you in here for a second. I guess I have one of those. I'm gonna move your move your camera as well, so forgive me for the shaking for a moment here. Alright, so I have one of those <laughs> situations that I create for myself often where I have this red abstract slash mark pencil past I don't know what it was. Doesn't matter going through the, the middle, so to speak, going right through this church steeple. 
and it is it does not represent anything first of all look, let me establish that very clearly okay that red mark is was not an attempt to you know render a power line or a shooting star <laughs> tinkerbell's vapor trail nothing like that it was just purely purely abstract mark and in a way, the, your impulse, one's impulse would be, well, that, that don't make sense. <laughs> Hello. Help me with the pronunciation of your name. Maraid? Or is it Maraid? Maraid. I'm going to say Maraid since your last name is Bainton. Thank you for that, good, that uh, wonderful observation by <laughs> light reflecting on my shirt that's funny funny in a good way um, so the, uh, one's intuition might say well eliminate that red line because it doesn't it's not representative it doesn't mean anything but uh, I have learned most of the time not only do I not eliminate it but I do what I just did which is in fact accentuate it even more make it stand out even more by painting around it, painting up to it on both sides. And I painted over it a couple places here, but even then you can still see where it was. I just scratched that off. Anyway, um, I've come to learn that that, that that is very Dan Nelson-ish impulse. All right, now, um, I just painted all that blue and then decided I don't like it. It's too much of a good thing. So, no no panic. But it's too blue. So I'm just going to wipe some of it off. And as you can see, wiping it off in a not a very careful manner. I'm, you know, making myself free to Again, color outside the line, so to speak. You, those of you who say, I want to pay, I want to get looser, then I hope you're paying attention to me. I, I, I want to quote, um, I want to quote, um, what's his name in Star Wars? Little green guy. Forgive me, my brain's in painting mode. I forget names often. Um, the little green guy. <laughs> There is only do or do not. There is no try. So that's sort of what I want to say to you people who say, I don't want to get loose. There's a do or do not. Hello, Redina. I would love some tea. Actually, I have some cold water over here that'll do. It's probably cold where you are, Redina. Has, has winter fallen upon you? All right, here's a principle, a practice, good practice for uh, painting. Um, if you get tired of doing one thing, one task, one focus, then, after, then just don't, don't try to press through and finish it. No, just abandon it. Forgive me, I'm going back here to sharpen my pencil, let the shavings fall on the sidewalk. Um, so that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I'm, I'm tired of messing around with all of that. It's okay, I'll just come back to it later. But I, I have a, because of the, my, um, by the way, did you see that right there? I just made two completely abstract marks. One line goes up there and this one comes over here. Um, again, completely abstract. Anti-image, one might say. Not only is it not representational, it's downright anti-representational. So Yoda, so I'll paraphrase Yoda again. There is there is do or do not, there is no try. Don't say I want to get loose, just get loose. Paint like me. I'm not always loose, but yeah, most of the time. Especially compared to most of you, probably. 
I mean, forgive me, I don't sound judgmental. <laughs> I know who you are. <laughs> and, and I am one of you. I are one of you. I am, my, I am on the same trajectory as the great majority of you. Tight painter, tight drawer, renderer, illustrator, drawer. Not all of you, but those of you who have the ability to draw, and now you're trying to get loose. Okay, thanks. Have fun. Nope, I'm good. Thanks. A little while ago, I started talking about um, comparing painting to uh, an athletic event. And you must get the drawing right. Oh, that's right. I never finished that topic at all today, did I? You must get the drawing correct. Um, hello. Thank you. Bad drawing is not an option. So I was talking about why I'm going to try not to ever use the term uh, loose painting again, because it conveys the wrong message. It, it suggests that your drawing should be you know, loose. And I, I'm now saying, no, 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 no. Drawing tight as something, whatever's tight. It's not obscene. <laughs> tight, tight. Tight, 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 tight drawing. Um, that is to say, accurate drawing. But drawn with, and painted with, energetic brushstrokes. There's the word, there's the key operative word. Drawn with energetic, so not loose, but energetic. It's a much better, much better description of good painting than loose. I've used the term loose like everybody else. I've used it my whole teaching life. Before I realized, wait a minute, that is a real miscue to, again, what I call early journey painters, people in the early part of their journey. <clears throat> anyway, you, you, you uh, comparing it to an athletic event like a football game or a soccer match, um, getting the drawing correct is like getting your team on the field. If you don't get the drawing correct, and of course, as we talked about, I talked about a bunch yesterday, there's many things that don't need to be correct and many things that, no, a few things that do. So here's the things that do need to be correct. Number one, perspective. Number two, figures. And then things like cars, doors, you know, the steeple needs to be straight and so on. But things that don't need to be correct, I, it's like, well, what if I've got this building a little bit to the far to the left or this? In fact, this lamppost in reality only comes up to here. So that's incorrect because, of course, I wanted it up there, not down there. So there are things that, that can be incorrect, of course. But when I say correct, that means, again, very, pretty short list. Uh, perspective. Figures, human figures, animals, figures, and um, identifiable objects, like objects that are that are known. That is, you know, people know what what a roller skate looks like. People know what a toaster looks like. So if you have one of those in your painting, those have to be correct. But things like does the roller skate or the toaster have to be in the right? spot that it is in reality, of course, the answer is absolutely not. No, no, that, that, that's an incorrect thing that's perfectly fine for it to be incorrect, so to speak. Oh, now that the light right now is, let me turn you around for a minute. The light is, other than the 
reflection out that one window. The light is really beautiful. Hang on, let me see if we can get that to automatically darken for you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, auto exposure. Sometimes it works well, sometimes not so well. Sorry about that, that didn't work very well. But anyway, beautiful, eh? Just beautiful. In fact, this, I, I took a bunch of pictures last night. I mentioned last night that when I'm out here, um, I take pictures starting um, early in the evening, it's, if it's an evening painting. Same thing if it's a morning. I take pictures, sun's moving the whole time, right? Let's, the sun's moving from here to here. And let's say the perfect light for this painting is here. Yeah, but I'll take pictures from here, 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 all the way across what I think might be perfect. Does that make sense? <laughs> Dina, I'm sorry, I'm reading your, your conversation about, that is not funny, is it? Reading about cat claw. All right, there we go. About cat disasters on your painting. Yeah, I would think small holes, as long as they didn't rip it, I would think small holes wouldn't be too hard. <laughs> the lady walking by, I thought she said the word ban. I, was, I had just started painting yesterday afternoon. Some of you might have been watching. <laughs> All of a sudden, a man hails me from half a block away. He says, Dan Nelson. How about that? My, my nine-year-old grandson, who's always very keen on making sure he calls me Bicca. My name is Bicca instead of Grandpa. Bicca, are you rich yet? <laughs> so I'm always glad to tell him when something happens that makes me appear a tiny bit rich. <laughs> Wait, I think I want to do more pencil. Um, I am clearly doing um, too much pencil here. And as I usually say, I, I, that, I, that's okay with me. I don't mind doing too much because uh, I am clearly going to come back later and, and cover up much of this pencil. Thank you. Okay, I, let me get back to the subject I keep dropping. So, what gets you on the field, what gets your team on the field, so to speak, is accurate, good drawing. Um, sticking with the sports analogy, but getting your team on the field does not put any points on the board, okay? So, and here's what I'm saying. Accurate drawing is an absolute must. But what gives you points is ironically, and this is a profound irony and one not easily grasped, not widely taught, certainly not widely understood. What puts points on the board is, well, frankly, all the abstract elements that you learned in ninth grade art class. 
That's the most boring way to put it. So let me repeat it, the most boring way to put it. What puts points on the board? The answer is line, shape, value, design, texture, color. I'm not sure you said that, but there's seven of them, right? What puts points on the board is all the abstract elements of design. Now let me restate that in a little bit more interesting manner. What, put po what puts points on the board is interesting marks, fascinating texture, composition, play of light, number one. I'm not giving them to you in order here. What puts points on the board is all the stuff that is not the drawing. Does that make sense? You know, in a little, I, I, I can reach this high, but I find that when, when I'm having to stretch, so to speak, to, to, to draw way up there, I tend to draw poorly. So I'm going to stop that here quick, shortly. And I'll move the painting, the easel down before I proceed to draw up there much more. Let me say the same thing. So now I'm getting, can you see that glow on my painting? I'm getting a reflection off my shirt. The sun is hitting my shirt. And um, bouncing, I'm creating a very intense yellow warm glow on the painting. It looks pretty, but I can't paint because it's glare reflecting back at me. Um, okay, let me say that. I'm going to say that same thing with different language or different in story form, if you will. Okay, so you have to eliminate the term loose painting from your vocabulary because it's probably sending you in a bad direction. No, tight drawing, accurate drawing, realistic drawing, good drawing. And yeah, do whatever you need to do to achieve that. If that means cheating, fine. Hey, let me, let me be clear. I, I talk about cheating a lot. Cheating is any time you trace or project or grid or measure in any way whatsoever. It, tracing is legal. Just don't forget your brain shrinks every time you cheat. So there are times when cheating is necessary. And that is if you want a good painting and you're, it's beyond your capacity to draw, then cheat. Doggone it. <laughs> he commences to swearing now. Cheat. Doggone it. At my house, when I was growing up, doggone it was a swearing word. <laughs> um, so do, do, do whatever you need to do to get the job done. Cheat. Go ahead. Just remember, your brain is shrinking. Your head's shrinking. I don't mean that literally. <laughs> I hope I don't have to explain that. Anyway, um, so what do you do? So that means for every, every time you do a painting in which you cheat, then, you know, just say, okay, then I need to do a drawing, a sketch, most typically where I don't cheat. So for every time that you go out and cheat, just make sure you do enough sketching. So you're, you're, that, build, that makes your head big again. <laughs> to use that silly word picture, okay? So cheat when you have to, but keep developing your skills by doing sketches. Fill up that sketchbook. Have one, have one sketchbook in your car, another one on your coffee table, another one in your bedroom, wherever. Wherever you spend time, if you're like me, wherever you spend time waiting for your spouse while you're waiting to go out the door. Now that won't work for some of you because you are the spouse that's being waited upon. But anyway, you fill in the blanks, whatever works for you. Um, so the word picture, the, the story picture I was going to give you, I'm out here on the sidewalk. Especially, this is especially helpful. Um, anytime where my easel is facing down the sidewalk, okay? It doesn't work here because there's a wall building right there. But anyway, people come up the street and they see, I'm gonna, I want to give you a story to go along with this. Correct drawing means you get your team on the field, points on the board, it's by all the other stuff. So people are walking up the sidewalk, they see me, an artist with this easel, or you, her, with your easel, facing away from them so that they can't see what's on the painting. But they see you half a block away. They see you 50, 50 paces away. And they say, oh, there's a person doing plein air painting. And obviously, they're painting this street. So during the 10 or 20 or 50 seconds, whatever it may be, that they're walking toward you, they are making predictions, whether they know it or not. They're making predictions about what it is that you're painting. 
They might even look over their shoulder and say, huh, you must be painting this view behind us. Yeah, I'm just making that up, right? And uh, and I can, I'm going to tell you what most people are predicting. That's, I have a lot of nerve, okay? And here it is. Most people, they see your plain air painting, if they know anything, some people don't, but if they know anything at all about that you're plain air painting and they, they see that your easel is set up, they think, oh, you must be painting this street, you must be painting these buildings, so that when I come around his easel, his or her easel, says the pedestrian to themselves, they're not even aware that they're saying it to themselves, but they're thinking, when I come around the corner of his easel and turn around, Here's what I'm going to see. Are you with? Are you following me so far? And here's what the pedestrian predicts. Again, whether they know it or not. And I've seen this in my own experience hundreds of times. I do most, the great majority of my planar painting is spent, is done like this on a city street. All right. So they're making predictions about what they're going to see when they come around the corner. And here's their prediction. They're saying to themselves, huh, I bet you I'm going to see a painting of this street. That's it. Profound, I know. And they're, they're saying, oh, it might be kind of realistic, or it might be he's not very good, and it's not very good, but, you know, it's probably going to be a painting. Like, you know, if they saw me here facing the other way, they would say, oh, I bet he's doing a painting of that beautiful church steeple, which you guys can hardly see right now. Come on, come on, come on, exposure. Get it right, get it right, get it right. Okay, so, all right, so they predict, oh, I bet he's doing a painting of that church steeple. Are you with me? And they come around the corner of my canvas, my canvas, expecting to see, you know, maybe I look like a reasonably intelligent perfect person. I obvi obviously, as an artist, I have a, a lot of chutzpah, a lot of nerve, both by the way I dress, by the size of my painting, by, you know, a whole bunch of things are happening here that gives them the impression, well, he seems like a competent guy. So they expect a reasonably good facsimile of, say, that church steeple. Are you with me? Following me so far? And if, in fact, they come around and they see a reasonable facsimile of that steeple, they go, ooh, nice. Now, there's two things that can happen. If I've been out here for nine days in a row, and it's a hyper-photorealistic painting, which is conceivable, not likely, but conceivable, they'll, they'll be surprised, and they'll say, Oh my God! Again, I, I hate the term, but it's ubiquitous in America, you know? They'll say, Oh my God, I was not expecting that at all. Okay? That's sort of one prediction, or one fulfillment. The other, is, is, since I'm not going to be out here for nine days, is they, they come around the corner and they see, let's, I'll just zoom in on that part of my painting, which is not finished yet, of course. They go and they say the same thing. They say, Oh my God. I was not expecting that. I'm not saying that they have to say, I'm not saying they have to say those exact words, but that's, it's not the facsimile that impresses them. It's all the other stuff. Line, shape, value, design, texture. Am I making sense? You guys, you're not paying attention to me. You're just all talking to each other, which I love. Thank you. It's hilarious. Keep on, keep on, keep on. That's so funny. Um, so let me let me flesh that out just a little bit for the one of you who's paying attention to what I'm saying. <laughs> um, so what is in, first of all, the drawing is accurate. Check my teams on the field. Okay, these look exactly like cars. These are gonna look like people. Looks like stair. Looks like street lights. Looks like a porch and a blah blah blah. Everything looks like what it's supposed to look like. So check, my, my team's on the field. But that's not what puts points on the board. Let me tell you what puts points on the board. Number one, composition. I have, and it's not, it's a little bit diminished right now. It'll be exaggerated more. I have this V of light, what I sometimes call a trans shape. There are a number of shapes in this painting. A building, a steeple, street light, cars. These are all car shapes people shapes, port shape, sign, flag shape, okay, but no, no, a trans shape is a, a shape that transcends, goes beyond all of those. So I have this trans shape, a big V here, 
of light again than the rest of it is dark. That surprises them. They didn't expect to see that. Number two, the color. This is this is not it's reflective. It's you know, you can see how I got here from my subject matter, but it's not really what they expected. Like they more more or less expected that big brown building in my painting to be a big brown building. Does that make sense? And they come around and they say, oh my gosh, there's red, uh, um, lavender, blue, green, red, what's that doing in there? Yellow, orange, phthalo blue, <laughs> more green, it's just every color in the rainbow in that building. Now it's not done yet, but even when it's done, there'll be bits and pieces of that. Do you get the point? So number one, my composition gets them, my play of light surprises them, my color surprises them, and here's one of the biggies, the texture surprises them. They did not expect to see whatever this is, of whatever it is, whatever you call it, I don't know what to call it, it's Dan Nelson texture, that's for sure. And that's, and that's what they're going, their brain is going, <laughs> their brain's going, <laughs> and their, <laughs> my fingers taste salty, their brain is experiencing mega doses of aesthetic pleasure. I need to take another picture. Am I making sense to you? Um, I hope somebody's listening who needs to hear this because this is good teaching. You've got to get the drawing right. If you're a bad drawer, then cheat while you need to. Cheat when you need to. And in between cheating, sketch. Sketch the heck out of those sketchbooks. Fill up every idle moment with sketching and make sketching fun. Don't let yourself slip into the into the trap of thinking that sketching is. I don't like to sketch. It's hard work. <laughs> just no. Just don't even ever go there in your mindset. Just don't ever even allow that that attitude to to take over in your brain. Okay, sketching is fun. Just tell yourself, sketching is fun. Sketching is fun. It's just as much fun as painting. <laughs> Okay. You've got to become a good sketcher. Your your um, your um, need to replace your SOS file with your reference file. Okay. Hmm. All right, I'm going to stop pencils for a while and go back to painting a little bit. I'm going to take a whack at this railing in particular. Oh, forgive me. Let me get a drink of cold water before I continue. I'm almost out. Oh, you know what? Hang on just a second. I'm sorry. I am going to... Um, the sun has gone around... Uh, it's going around the building. So I'm going to turn my easel before I do that. I have to take this flag out because I'm flag. <laughs> it's because I'm the, the umbrella, I promise, is stuck in a flag holder. That's why I, the word flag jumped into my brain. Uh, but I have to take this umbrella out because I can't move my easel until I get the umbrella out of the way. Hello. How are you? I'm great. How do you think I am? Great. <laughs> Thank you. Really cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do you really? Oh, last night you saw me. I'm Dan. What's your name? Earl. Nice Hi, Earl. You. Let me give you a card so you can say, who was that crazy guy who was out? You live there? Where? Which one? With my family in this one. I put some trash in your trash last night. Thank you, very, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. And I was wondering what lucky people got to live. Have you lived here a long time? Your whole life? Um, not in this house my whole life, but for eight years. Or something yeah? Like that? Yeah. Do you like it? I love it. It's great. Good. Um, I, I was going to hit you if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really cool spot. It, it is. Good. That makes me feel better because I think anybody who lives in this kind of beauty, if they don't appreciate it, no, they need to let move out let somebody else come I in. Agree. I good agree. Good for you. Good for you. How much more work do you have to do here? You're almost quite a, No. No. Quite a bit, actually. Um, oh, I don't have my batteries in yet. Um, no, I'll probably be here till I run out of gas, till 9 o'clock tonight. And, Got it. And then, and then one whole more, uh, one more whole session, you know, tomorrow. Got it. But I live in a rally, so cool. I, go, I can't come back tomorrow, which I would, I, I'd love to come back. 
but you're seeing it, 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 it the, you, this is what it's going to look like, you know. It won't look a whole lot different than this, just some, parts, it. It, some parts will be tightened up a little bit more realistic, but it'll still have weird stuff in the sky and stuff like that. Yeah, that's awesome. The stuff that makes it weird. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, nice to meet you. Likewise. Thanks for coming over. Yeah, no, keep Appreciate doing it. Cool work, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it must be a, you guys listening to me interact with passersby. <laughs> I don't know what you think other than Dan Nelson's a nut. Well, I'll agree to guilty to that accusation. I, am, I do enjoy talking with strangers. They don't always enjoy talking with me. <laughs> oh, that is not how I was going to finish that sentence, I promise. <laughs> so, a uh, question somebody asks. And then he moves to a warmer blue as in ultramarine. Um, I didn't catch the beginning of that question. Maraid. Um, no, I do not move. I call, by the way, and, and you're welcome. Oh, Michael Van Dusen. Oh, Barbara's been watching. Yes, Barbara, you have some killer paintings. Barbara, I've been enjoying watching your stuff. I, I commented on your dad's boots. That was you, right? <laughs> on, uh, on Facebook. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go to the car and get something. What was it? Oh, batteries to my, to my light. Bear with me. Well, I'll tell you what, since why well, let this opportunity be wasted? <laughs> so you get to watch me. <laughs> that is exciting, I'm sure. <laughs> Walk to my car and get my batteries out of my backpack. <laughs> Um, I don't know if my little microphone transmitter goes as far or not. I hope it does. Whew. Oh, thank God, the hot, hot. Hot air is gone, hot weather is gone. There we go. All right. Now we have light. Much better, much nicer. <laughs> oh, Barbara, thank you for that. I'm glad you think I'm great with the public. <laughs> a little bit much for some people. I admit that one of my old friends years ago, she was really, and she really is a friend, but she said, you know, a little Dan Nelson goes a long way. <laughs> Look, I'm still laughing. She probably said that 10 years ago, and I still think it's funny. Yeah, well, you know, a little Dan Nelson goes a long way. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even offended. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. I'm about to get serious on this porch railing up here. Um, yeah, nice painting, Barbara, the, your dad's shoes. By the way, I posted a... I read a comment on it. I said... I said something. I said, love this, Barbara, something like that. And when I, and my, my, the word love was in all caps. And when I pushed publish, my darn editor on my phone turned it into lowercase. And I let out with an exasperation. Not a cuss, just to like, ah, man. <laughs> you know, one of those. And I explained to my wife, 
sister-in-law why I had exasperated. And I said, because I said, love this, Barbara. And then you got it and just said, love this, Barbara. <laughs> there. But all is well, because now I've had the opportunity to explain it to you in live and in person. So what I was trying to say about those shoes was, man, love this, Barbara. There. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and some of you Moraid and others, and forgive me Moraid, I, 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 I hate if I'm butchering people's names, and I haven't seen yes if, if you, uh, oh good, oh good, there it is, not, not you, no, oh, you're welcome, um, excellent, good to have you on board, as you can see, as you can see, we have a delightful <laughs> and rather zany little community here, I don't know why they would be zany. <laughs> it has nothing to do with me, I'm sure. <laughs> um, we have an absolutely delightful community here. Um, okay, so I'll continue on the on a related theme. So this is a repeat for all my old regulars. Um, Marae, just to help you catch catch up really fast, this is one of the things I say on the broad topic of painting, broadly about painting. I've been saying this for, blah, blah, not years, but maybe six or eight months, something like that, okay? That most people, most, not all, but most people spend the first half of their art journey and really, referring primarily to painting of course but any art journey would really be the same but they spend most people spend the first half of their art journey learning how to paint stuff that looks like stuff and then if they're lucky not everybody makes the transition but if they're lucky they make the transition and they spend the second half of their art journey learning how to paint stuff that looks like paint okay so Marade, i might be talking to you only because I, I i know that you're new here and you've had the sweetness to speak up which we appreciate um so I, that's that's related to everything i've been saying earlier this evening about um you know you get your the drawing has to be accurate not loose but rendered with energy, which is very different from loose, right? So it has to be rendered with good energy. And um, all the abstract, it's all the abstract things that put points on the board, so to speak. And let me, I'll get you a little bit even more, I'm not sure what the word is, practical, I'm not sure, but um, there is, a, well, in fact, I'll, I'll turn you around so you can see it. Here's the street looking the other way. Let me see how that looks. Yeah, that's pretty good. So in that white building right there is evidently a very fine art gallery called Mary Martin Art Gallery. You can look it up, Mary Martin, in um, Charleston, South Carolina. Has, the sign, has a sign on the window said, you know, voted number one art gallery in South Carolina. And I'm, I'm assuming it's true. I, can't imagine that they would put that on there if it wasn't true. So evidently, you know, at least in some circles, won a bunch of awards and so on. So I'm just, again, just telling my, telling the thing, telling the story again in different ways. So I'm, because I'm an artist and it's in my business, it's my business. So I'm keenly aware that there's an art gallery down there. Now, by the way, today is Monday. I haven't even been down there. I would give it, I would say it's more than a 50-50 chance that it is in fact closed on Monday, but be that as it may. Um, and so of course I can't imagine, I can't help imagining as a full-time artist what would happen if Mary Martin or whoever owns it now were to come out here and see my painting. Um, and I can tell you without any hesitation whatsoever that as she approached if she were to approach, and I'm not, I am not at all holding my breath, by the way, um, but if she were to approach me as she walked up the street, first of all, she would think 
she would think that there's about a one-tenth of one percent chance that she's going to be impressed by my work. And I would agree with her. There's about a one out of a thousand chance that she gets approached by artists every single day and about accepts about one out of a thousand if she's a, that good of a gallery. That's just what it's like to be a gallery owner. And uh, I've never owned a gallery, but I've had lots of friends who do. Anyway, and as she approached, that is the process that would go through her mind. She would say, first of all, unless I'm, unless I'm doing a, a very distinct, uh, and it is distinct, unless I'm doing a distinctly Van Gogh-ish thing, which I'm not, then she would, then she would, her brain would go to, okay, then, then he, he better have his drawing pretty darn accurate. And she would look at my painting and she'd go, oh, better than I expected. It is pretty darn accurate. So I, I would be in the game at that point, so to speak. Does that make sense? I, I would be, my field is, on, my team is on the field in her mind. It's like, oh, wow, okay. The kid, <laughs> I fed, I flatter myself in thinking that she would call me a kid. She, <laughs> she would say, oh, so the old, the old fart can draw. <laughs> more likely <laughs> but that wouldn't put that would not turn her head that would not impress her really that would just that would just be okay so I passed I got through the initial you know I didn't I, I got my I didn't get kicked out of consideration right off the, right off the bat she would say okay wow you can draw I'm impressed but what would impress her, if she was to be impressed at all, I'm saying if there's a Mary Martin, owns the Mary Martin Gallery, would not be the, the picture, I like to mispronounce it on purpose, would not be the accuracy per se, what would impress her would be all the other stuff. And I, and I'm, I dare say she probably would be impressed, okay, because she, she'd be, not impressed, she'd be surprised, that's, that's really the, what I wish to say is not impressed. She would be surprised because she wouldn't even expect, number one, if I could draw, she would assume, well, if he can draw, like if somebody told him, oh man, he draws, it looks like a photograph, she would roll her eyes and if she walked up and said, oh, he doesn't draw like a photograph at all. He really knows how to paint. She would be surprised. Okay, so are you getting, I'm trying to, in a sense, tell the, the, same, tr the same reality over and over and over again. And it's a hard one for, uh, to learn while you are in, did I say the word while? Did I enunciate that word carefully for you? Good, shut up, stop interrupting me. It's, it's a hard reality, a hard truth to learn when you are in fact still laboring in the first half of your art journey. And I know that well because I remember that sensation very well. And I, I'm not saying now that I, I couldn't have gotten out quicker, but I didn't. I spent decades, literally decades, in that first half of art journey. Okay? Uh, it wasn't until literally 15 years ago, rather suddenly, rather suddenly, after I'd been a full-time artist for decades, full-time illustrator, Rather suddenly, the light bulb came on. That's a story I've told it many times before. I won't, I won't repeat it this time today. But at the, I, at, when I did make that turn, see, I, I had literally decades behind me of learning how to paint stuff that looks like stuff. And again, you can still see my work, dannelsonart.com. You can. Go to DanNelsonArt.com and click on illustrations. And most of the work in there, except for the cartoons, I suppose, most of the work in there shows my bent toward realism. Some of it, even hyper-realism, some of the airbrush stuff. And it was great fun, and it's still I still enjoy doing extreme realism on occasion. But I don't think it's my best work. It's fun. It's like a hobby but it's not great, it's just fun. All right, I mean, I, maybe I should talk about something else for a while.
the essence of good painting is making is making interesting marks. Again, that's a description from the second half of art journey, not from the first half. It's very confusing to those of you who may still be stuck in that first half. So I don't get it. That's all right. That's right. We're. I'll be patient. With, people were patient with me. I'll be patient with you. Not everybody makes the jump to second half. That's all right. That is all right too. Well, what am I looking for? Yellow ochre and Naples yellow. There it is. Yeah, I got, got them both. That looks kind of pretty. Hey, let me see what that looks like with the light off here. Nope, definitely need the light on. Glad I have it. Um, hey, let me show you guys the light. I know people, you're curious about that. Different people are curious at different times. Um, I, it's a, I got it online from B and H Photo. It is a, um, it's a LED. Hang on just a second. Let me take the, let me show it to you. Um, it's got a diffuser on top of it, so it has um, it has warm lights and cold lights, you know, yellow yellow white and I mean blue white and yellow white, and you can adjust the the temperature and of course adjust the brightness. And then this, when I'm paint, doing a painting this large, this diffuser really does help, because it diffuses the light of course so there you go and it's got batteries rechargeable batteries there on the back those two batteries will last I don't know how long I've never worn them down yet um, at least eight hours uh, I was at a wedding last week and um, painted for at least eight hours with the light on all the time and when I got home I think they were at about 45% but they go off, by the way. They turn, just for what it's worth, they, they turn off at about 20%. So it's not like you get all the way down to zero. Um, all right, I'm, I'm ready to uh, lower this easel. It's the only downside about this particular easel is unlike my big, big, bigger easel. Um, which goes down with a push of a finger. This one does not, it's a bit of an operation. So forgive me for just a minute. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, is that good enough? No, let's go down one more. Okay. I have a, a a screw tightener, you know, wing nut tighten uh, set screw back there. I certainly, would, I certainly do not trust the the ratchet, you know, the system that that comes with the uh, with the, the easel was built with. Um, don't trust that at all because I put a whole lot more weight on this easel than it was designed to carry. So anyway, so I have to tighten and loosen that screw back there. All right, so let's let's do some drawing up here at the top. I couldn't really reach very well. Oh, I wish the sun would stay right <laughs> right where it is right now. For one thing, it is gorgeous out here, just gorgeous. And more importantly, <laughs> I can I can uh, turn around and look at my subject matter which you know in an hour that will all be that will all be in darkness the 
temperature has finally gotten very comfortable. It's really one amazing uh, uh, steeple, in case you can't tell. I have painted uh, Charleston, I would guess, probably a five days total in, in the past 15 years. Like I've come down and painted, you know, for a couple days and then come down and painted for a couple days another time. Maybe only four. Well, no, yesterday would make at least five, and today maybe six. So anyway, I've painted around um, Charleston quite a bit. And believe it or not, this trip, even before uh, we drove down here, I was, I was thinking about this, painting this steeple. Um, I wasn't sure that I was going to paint it, but I, I was inclined. It's really nice when that happens. That doesn't happen very often. You know, like if I were to take a trip to Yosemite, and there's so many, so many amazing views. You know, it'd be wonderful if I had, say, okay, I know I'm going to do a painting of Half Dome from this angle. And, and, uh, in my, my impression, my experience is there's a really a definite, uh, advantage to feeling that way. To sort of having a vision, if you will, having a picture in your mind before you even get somewhere. Say, oh, I want to paint, you know, I want to paint Times Square from this angle or that angle or something. Um, very often doesn't work out the way you think, but it, that's a lot better than like when I'm downtown and when I'm home and, and I'm going to go paint downtown Raleigh. And many times I have no idea where I'm going to go and I drive around, you know. Uh, fussing and fuming and trying not to fuss and fume. You know, trying to find the perfect subject matter. And you finally settle on something and you're not sure you like it. Anyway, that happened. That's more typical. That's more common. So to, to have a firm idea of what I want to paint and then to get here and for it to be confirmed when I see it is a really nice treat. It doesn't happen very often. So And I think, on the whole, one tends to paint a little bit better when that happens. When you get to actually paint what you've got a passion for, so to speak. Passion's putting it too strongly. But I'll let it stay. <laughs> Hello. Glad to be in service. Thank you, thank you. Once again, I'll say to any, anybody who might be watching, especially if you're a, an early journey painter, um, do pay some attention to the, the way, the manner in which I'm painting, the way I'm holding the brush, the brushes, and the fact that I'm holding brushes instead of brush, it's significant. Um, you could you could ask yourself you could say about me you could say well <laughs> if i were there you might say you might say to me if i were there <laughs> i could paint that that steeple a whole lot more accurately a whole lot more i could be a lot more realistic than that <laughs> You hear me, right? <laughs> well, look at I'm holding, actually holding the brush in the pretty close to the death control grit right there. But it won't last long, I promise. Plus, having done so, I'm gonna mess it up a little bit. Of course I could I could paint I could hold my brush in a depth control grip and paint it much more realistically. I'm assuming that you understand all the 
Everything I'm saying is explaining why I'm not doing that, right? And again, it is, it is a bit of a mystery to people who are stuck in realism. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not, what's the word, decrying down, speaking badly of, of that, that place in your journey. For most people who grow up to be, grow up, so to speak, it's not an age thing. You can make the transition at 87, I'm sure. Most who grow up to be good painters, and they make, it's because they make that magical adjustment from painting party pictures to painting paint. By that I mean to painting all the abstract elements that are done with the paint. Okay, first half of our journey, we learn to paint stuff that looks like stuff. Second half of our journey, we learn to paint stuff that looks like paint. Line, shape, value, design, texture, composition, color, all the uh, abstract elements we design. People are falling asleep at their computers. They keep saying the same thing over and over and over. They keep saying the same thing over and over. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I do indeed. I do indeed. <laughs> I can say mostly it's because I'm a good teacher. Partly it's because I'm a bad teacher. <laughs> I try to come up with new ways to say it. That is certainly true. All right, I am. Let's do some. Hmm. I don't have a color mixed up that I like. It's got to be yellower than that. Let's try that. Hey, just a word about palette knife painting. Um, I can't remember where it was. I was with somebody recently. I've heard this kind of thing many times over the decades. It's like, oh man, I did this whole painting with a palette knife. In fact, I remember when I was in high school, my dad was a pretty good hobby painter. And I remember he did a, for fun, he did a whole painting with a palette knife and actually entered it in the local art, arts association and won something, not first or second, but he won some prize. That was good. I don't know why I told you that. Just because I guess I, I've been aware, very aware of palette knife painting um, for a very long time. My daddy did it, okay? And I have an opinion, as you can imagine. No, you don't mean it. You don't mean it. You don't mean Dan Nelson has an opinion. Yep, yep, yep. I know this comes as a surprise to you. I have an opinion <laughs> on, on palette knife painting. My, my opinion is everybody should do one. <laughs> everybody, everybody should do one. <laughs> um, I, I, and of course, that's not, I'm not being strict, but I, I think that, it, I don't. It, it, when I see somebody who's gaga over palette knives, knife. Now, if they become famous and are making lots of money, well, then that's their own dumb luck. Now they're stuck and they have to paint palette knife because that's their style and that's what they're known for and that's what they're making money with. But um, when I run into somebody who's just a you know early journey painter and they're all excited, all gaga about palette knife, I say, I, I smile, blandly, wanly, I give them a wan smile, <laughs> and inside I think, bless your little heart, well, go ahead, go for it, go for it, ma'am, or sir, or buddy, go for it, just go for it, knock your 
knock your socks off. Do it, do it, do it, do it. And then get over it. <laughs> Just get over it. It's, it's like getting stuck at an immature phase. I think everybody should be, 12th grade would be a perfect time, by the way. But that's right, many of you weren't artists in 12th grade. So then you're, you're, everybody should go through a season. It should last at least one painting, maybe two at the most, where you're like all gaga about. Because it's a tool. It's just a tool. It's only a tool. You should use it like a tool. You should be really excited about it for a little while, and then you should move on and grow up. Um, it's sort of like, it's like being gaga about any other tool. No, you shouldn't get stuck on it. You shouldn't stunt your growth by stopping with... Oh, I'm, I love, I love palette knife paintings. Eh, okay, for a couple months, go for it. And get over it. I'm sorry, I'm being a little bit mean here. <laughs> Is he always this mean? No, just sometimes. Sometimes he's worse. <laughs> yeah, no, go through, your, go through your palette knife phase. Have it, blow it up, you know, blow it out the doors. Do a whole bunch if you want, well, however many you can do in three months, then get the heck over it. And then move on to mature painting in which you are very competent at using a palette knife, but you're not gaga over it. Are there any parallels? Absolutely. Like, let's take, for instance, and I'm not an expert at this by any means, but I understand that one of the artists that I like a lot these days, Jeremy Mann, who paints on a hard panel, he does a lot of beautiful cityscapes. Um, Jeremy Mann, as I understand it, and again, not, not an expert, but as I understand it, he uses all kinds of crazy rollers and scrapers and all kinds of things in his painting. And I say, bully for him. Now, he's not an immature painter by any means. Um, but his, some people get excited about him and say, oh, I should use rollers, I should use Here's another one, Christian Hook, who I think Jane introduced me to Christian Hook a couple months ago, and I'm gaga about Christian Hook right now. It's like, dang, I love the way that guy paints. So just look him up, Christian Hook. And um, somebody told me uh, I was, I was waxing rapturously about Christian Hook some time ago, and someone said, yeah, he uses windshield wipers on his paintings. <laughs> okay, so the parallel would be that, that, that if you or I or someone got all, 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 all excited about like, Eureka, I have found the secret, it is using windshield wipers in your paintings. You hear the silliness in that, right? So that's sort of what I'm saying about about um, about palette knives. Don't get stuck. It's just a tool. Sure, use it twice, three times. Get go gaga for three months, then come back to your senses and just use it as a tool. There you go. Somebody, one of you needed to hear that, and I hope whoever that was is listening or will listen. Somebody might say, oh, Dan Nelson, he scratches a lot with the back of his brush. And he uses these black pencils. I have found the answer, Eureka, it is using black pencils. Jerry's Artorama Jumbo Jet Black Pencils in your painting. That is the secret. Nope. <laughs> Glad you enjoy it. Hope you, hope you are all bunkers about it for a couple months. And then you just go back to just good painting with or without the pencils. All right. <laughs> Is he always this opinionated? Doggone, I, I thought I liked him for a while there. Yeah, he does get on a tear. <laughs> now and then. <laughs> I was witnessing something here lately, I forget what it was. I can't remember if it was on TV, or it was just in a conversation. But it reminded me of what I talk about, have talked about fairly often on, here on this channel. Why do I care that you guys, whoever's watching me, why do I care that you become good painters? 
I mean, in a way, it's very strange, very almost absurd. I don't, you know, in a sense, I don't know who you are, so to speak. I mean, now I have some, some people that watch so often. <laughs> like, we're going to have to have a reunion one of these years. But, you know, most of you, unless we do that, I'll never see you. Why do I care that you're a good painter? Well, the fact is <laughs> that the crazy part is I really do care. That's the crazy part. Now, partly just because I'm a natural born teacher. That is, and that's what teachers do. Teachers care about teaching. So that's part of the answer. But that's not all of it. Because I could say, well, yeah, but why do you care if they're good painters? And um, I actually have an answer to that question. And it's partly uh, selfish, partly less altruistic than you might think. What was it that came up, though, that reminded me of this? Let me think for a minute, see if I can retrieve that. Why do I honestly care, and I do, there's no question that I care, why do I honestly care that you guys, all you guys, become better painters? Um, and we were talking about something that mattered, I mean, in life. Um, Okay, I can't think of it, so I'll just tell you why. Um, I'll get a little bit, I'll get dangerously philosophical here for a minute, okay? And whenever that happens, then I also get dangerously metaphysical, and I don't want to trigger anybody, <laughs> okay? So at the risk of triggering some people, um, I have a worldview. I usually keep my worldview fairly close to my chest because I don't want to I don't want to do the old bait and switch thing you guys are coming here to my channel thinking you're gonna watch painting and hear painting and I don't want to violate that trust so um, I don't want to wander far from that but my uh, my worldview part of my worldview that I think I can say safely without again without triggering anybody too many people too much is that okay I'll use extremely uh, naturalistic language okay I believe the human race is actually uh, uh, making progress. Um, I actually believe, and you don't have to agree with me, of course, <laughs> it goes without saying, I actually believe the world is becoming a better place. And uh, I think I have the numbers and the history to prove it. Now, I'll tell you who does not believe this. Um, it's people who are not students of history, okay? People who don't really study history, really do history much. That's who disagrees with me. Anybody who's a, a, a lover of history, now I don't mean by the way that that means they have a degree in history, not at all. In fact, um, in fact, I would, I would find myself at disagreements to a radical degree with those of you who have drunk the history, spelled H-I-S-T-O-R-I-E, those of you who have drunk the history Kool-Aid, and only those of you who have drunk the Kool-Aid know even what I mean by that. The rest of you are not going to look it up. Um, anyway, so uh, there's this guy on TED Talk, Hans Eberling, or <laughs> I forget his name. It's a, it's a Scandinavian name, Hans uh, has done that. And in fact, if you just Google the words, probably, um, the world is getting better, Hans, TED Talk. Um, you'll find he has more than one, and it's quite impressive. And I don't, I don't have this worldview because of him, you understand. Um, I've, I've held this worldview for a long time. He just happens, happened to come along and give me some pretty cool statistical support for my worldview. So I think the world's getting better. Hello. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Oh, yeah. My wife and Donna just arrived. Have you had fun? Was yeah. is that gallery closed? No, it's open. What's it open? No, Did you go in? Yeah, we talked about it. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> we did. Did you really? Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Well, that's fun. Thanks for doing that. I would have expected nothing else. They get bombarded every single day by wannabe artists. 
and about one out of a thousand are worthy of your attention. Yep. So why would he think that I'm one of, not one of the 999? Yeah. He had one very nice painting, the one that looked like a, the one that was right in front with the woman in the water. I thought that was a nice one. It looked like a Don Hatfield painting, but I looked it up and she's, he's not listed as one of her artists. Evidently it's not his. Anyway, I was in the middle of talking to my people about why do I care so much that they all become good artists, which seems really weird. And so I started, I started saying that I have a worldview. My worldview is that the world is getting better and better. Yeah, I did hear you saying that. Wait, wait. <laughs> and, uh, and, okay, so I'll finish that thought, and then I'll visit me with my wife and Donna. Um, so the world is getting better and better. And, again, I, I could go on and on, but I'll leave it at that for now. Some of you are gagging and sputtering and spearing and leaving my channel in droves. That's right, that's right. Um, but here's, here's the, the dynamic. We all, as human beings, we're not as individual as we think. Those of us who grew up in the West, we all think that we're like, that we're an island. That we're, you know, onto ourselves. But age and experience and research and so forth has convinced me that it is largely not true. So we all, as human beings, we all go up together or we all go down together. We all influence each other. I've used this analogy many times. I've just talked about this subject, related subjects, many times. So for instance, why are there so many good sprinters from Jamaica? The silly answer would be, well, because this one guy sprinted and somebody else who'd never heard of sprinting also sprinted, and somebody else who also had never heard of, you know, we all know Hussein Bolt. Well, do you think there's a whole bunch of little, little Jamaican kids now running around the dusty streets of Jamaica dreaming of being the next Hussein Bolt? You are darn right. You're exactly correct. There are. And you could add that and take, so just take that one word picture, that one, that one example and multiply it times a thousand. When I was in high school, I was in high school in Cleveland, Ohio, and I was a serious musician in high school, and I was surrounded by a bunch of kids who were, who were uber serious musicians. When I was a senior in high school, I practiced my trumpet five or six hours a day. Now, why did I practice my trumpet five or six hours a day? Well, of course, because I wanted to be good and want to be better. But part of the big part of the reason is because I had a whole bunch of friends who basically did the same thing. We all go up together, we all go down together. No man is an island, we're all influenced by each other. Um, why, why did Florence, Italy, in the, in the uh, Renaissance, produce so many outrageously good artists? The answer is, we all go up together, we all go down together. So that's why I want you guys to be good painters, because we all go up together, we all go down together. And I want the whole world to go up. That's just how crazy I am. All right, this is a good time for me to take a break. You're getting an awful lot of glare there, I know. All right, Moraid, you go, my dear. <laughs> you go, you go, you go, you go. You're just now getting into your second half. Good for you, good for you. All right, gang, I am going to take a break, hang out with my wife here for a while I enjoyed <laughs> David you may not make any more comments <laughs> David saying no Dan Nelson rants a lot <laughs> no <laughs> David in Quebec <laughs> I'm kidding about not making comments David I'm being silly pay no attention to that man in Quebec <laughs> he accuses me of being ranting and being arrogant <laughs> love you man thanks for thanks for being here <laughs> all right i can take <laughs> i can take a break i hate to cut off your conversation you guys are having a great time talking to each other but i am going to take i'm going to take a break <laughs>
Uh, I'm happy. I hope it don't ruin this painting. I still, still could ruin it, but I hope it won't. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. I'll, I'll end this broadcast and start another one if I start another one tonight. Okay, thanks. Bye.